Hi and welcome everyone. In this video, I want to go over the mean value theorem and uh, understand what the mean value theorem is. But uh, before going over the mean value theorem, we need to know about the Rolls theorem. So let's go over the Rolls theorem first. Now let f be a function that satisfies the following conditions or hypothesis. So First, it have to be, has to be continuous on the closed interval AB. F is differentiable on the open interval AB, and F of A is F of B. So if we, we have these three conditions, then we can say there's a number C in AB such that F prime of C equals to zero. You know when the derivative of a function equals to zero, there we have we do have a horizontal tangent line, an, a mean or a max. Now let's understand this by checking some graphs. The first graph I have here, well, we can have a constant function, just a line going from A to B. And don't forget F of A is always equals to F of B and that goes for all three cases. If it's a line, that's a constant function. The derivative of a constant function is zero. So here we can have unlimited number of c's. I put c1, c2. So everywhere the derivative of this function is zero. So between a and b. Case number two, if I kind of have this function like a parabola, I go from a and I reach B, we know we're going to have a horizontal tangent line and a max here. And that's where the derivative f prime of c equals to zero and c is between a and b. Another case we can go up, come down because if it's continuous, so and go to be from a to b. And here we have two c's. So here maybe it's better to say there is at least a number c. So here we have C1, we have a max and a mean. And when we have a max and a mean, then the prime of C equals to zero. So remember this theorem because we're gonna use that when we are proving, proving the mean value theorem. But let's see what mean value theorem is first. So we have a function again, and we have the following conditions are satisfied. Of course, F is continuous on the closed interval AB. F is differentiable on the open interval AB. If that happens, then there is a number C in AB. So, and this one also, we can say there is at least a number C in AB such that F prime of C equals to f of b minus f of a over b minus a or if you cross multiply you can say f of b minus f of a is a prime of c times b minus a let's see what that means well one thing i want you to notice when you have this f of b minus f of a over b minus a this is just rise over run this is the slope of the secant line and we learned that if prime of C is the slope of the tangent line at point C and F of C. So what does the theorem say? It says there is at least a number or let's say just a moment that F prime of C equals to F of B minus F of A over B minus A. So now, What's the meaning of that? It says that the slope of the secant line, which is that, equals to the slope of the tangent line. Or we can say there's a moment that the secant line is parallel to the tangent line, at least a moment. Or you can say we learned that the secant line, the slope of the secant line is the average rate of change and the slope of the tangent line is the instantaneous rate of change. So these two are equal. So here I kind of try to show it to how it works. So this is a function. 
and that's the second line. And as we know, there is a point C where that line and that line are parallel. If two lines are parallel and they have the same slope. Or let's say if you drive from this point to that point, there is a point where the instantaneous velocity is equals to equal uh, is going to be equal to the average velocity. So, or instantaneous rate of change equals to the average rate of change. Now let's go over the proof of that. See how we can prove, and the proof of mean value theorem is very important. So let's take a look at this graph. Again, this is our function, the red one is our f of x. And I drew this line, that's the secant line. And I can call that line to be y. So let's have the secant line is y. This is our function f of x. And we can say, we can have this function h of x, which is the difference of f of x and y. So now let's go over this. Let y be the equation of the line segment AB. So let's say we can find the equation of that line just using algebra. We know that the point slope formula, we can say uh, y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1. Here we have y minus or y1, if I pick that point, is f of a, and that equals to the slope of this line, that's the secant line. So it's f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So that's m and that's times x minus a. If I isolate y, then I can get, I can say y equals to f of a plus f of b minus f of a over b minus a. This is just the slope, it's a constant times x minus a. Now going back to h of x, h of x is just the difference between the function minus the line, so it's that distance. So one more time, it's that distance. So I can write h of x as f of x minus y, and that's gonna be f of x minus, but we have the equation of that line the line segment AB, and we can substitute Y by F of A plus, again, F of B minus F of A over B minus A, and that's times X minus A. And if you simplify it, you can kind of write this as F of X minus F of A, and again, F of B minus F of A over B minus A times X minus A. So this is the function H of X. Again, H of X is F of X minus Y. Now we can note that h of x is continuous on the closed interval AB because f of x is continuous and the line segment is continuous. Since y and f of x are differentiable, both of them f of x and this are differentiable. This is just a linear function. It's the equation of a line. So therefore, h of x is differentiable on the closed open interval AB. Now, what we can do here is to apply Rolle's theorem so to h of x. So one more time, h of x, we said is f of x minus f of a, and that's minus f of b minus f of a or b minus a. This is a constant as x minus a. If I try to find or if we find the derivative of h of x, h prime of x is going to be f prime of x f of a is just a constant. So the derivative of that is zero. And the derivative of this portion, this is a constant I can distribute. If I distribute that times that is a constant, so the derivative will be zero. And that times x, the derivative of that is just the slope itself or f of b minus f of a over b minus a. If I say y equals to mx plus b, the derivative y prime is just m. So basically, 
that's where it comes from. So now if we take the zero, we, we know that this is h prime of x is f prime of x minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a. If I calculate h of a, h of a is f of a minus f of a. So we are right here. And that's f of b minus f of a over b minus a times a minus a. So this is zero and that's zero. So we get zero. If we calculate h of b, h of b is f of b minus f of a times f of minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So here b minus, if uh, we substitute b minus a and b minus a, they cancel f of b with f of b, they cancel and f of a plus f of a, they cancel and we get zero. Conclusion, h of a equals to h of b. So remember Rolle's theorem. So the Rolle's theorem, one of the conditions was, was that the function at those two points, it has to be equal. So we know that h of a equals to h of b. From the Rolle's theorem, there's a number c in a, b such that h prime of c equals to zero. So we are using the Rolle's theorem here. So h prime of c equals to zero. You just substitute c. h prime of c is f prime of c minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a, and that's h prime of c, and that should be equal to zero. Basically, you say that equals to zero. So if that equals to zero, then we can say f prime of c equals to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So the proof of mean value theorem is very important. And again, that means that the slope of the tangent line is the same as the slope of the secant line. I think that's it for this video. So maybe in the next videos, we're going to do some examples. Thank you for watching and I'll uh, have a good one, everyone.